If you're here for Narakomi Pottery, you are in the right place. So stick around. What's up everybody? My name is Jim and welcome back to the studio. Eric G says, Hi Jim, thank you for another great video. Thanks Eric. I would love to see some finished pieces using the Narakomi clay you just created. Eric, I'll meet you halfway. I can't make the pieces and fire them in the time that I want to put this video out, but I'll make some pieces and show you how I'm going to make this new body of work that I'm really excited about. So Narakomi pottery, slab cups. As you know, a couple weeks ago I made three different Narakomi blocks. Here's one of those blocks. There are a lot of ways that you can use Narakomi blocks. I'm going to show you one way. It should be a quick video. This is beautiful, isn't it? Mwah. My block of clay, rolling pin, torch. Super excited to use this. A couple other tools. Like I said, there's a lot of ways you can use these Narakomi blocks. I am using a mold that I made from some wood that I cut with a chop saw. I'm using this mold here. I'm going to roll some slabs and lay them in here. This gives me the ability to add some really sharp edges without distorting these designs. Unless you chip off plaster in your Narakomi block. So I'm using half of a press mold for this cup. With the size of this block the way that it is, it's only big enough for one piece. So I have a trick to save you some clay. We'll cut a quarter inch piece. By far the best part of this. Now this size, like I said, is about big enough for you know one and a half pieces. So I laid it in there, but that eats up your Narakomi block really fast. So here's my trick to get you more out of all the work you put into these blocks. I take some porcelain clay and I roll a slab that's a quarter inch thick. I make sure it's as long as the Narakomi piece and I roll it out this way. So because this piece is a quarter inch and this piece is a quarter inch, if I stack them and then roll them out, I should get a piece that's twice the size of this that's a quarter inch thick. If that doesn't make sense, it will soon. This board is really wet. I'm gonna switch boards. Ugh, so boring and bland, no contrast. When you're rolling on top of your Narakomi, make sure you clean your roller. Then I have a t-shirt. This will help me keep my designs clean. So I'm gonna roll from the middle forward in the middle, back. Tell you what, I'll take off the shirt so you can see what's happening. It'll be okay. If you roll all the way from the front, you're gonna overlap some of your designs. You get a little bit of distortion, but it saves you a lot of clay. I'm gonna cut this directly in half, put half away for later. Decide how you want your design to go. Kind of sink it in here a little bit, almost like a taco, fold it, rest it down in there. First I'll process my fingers and make sure it's worked into most of those seams. So now I'll take my sponge and I'll press and really kind of squeegee that clay into those sharp edges. Fiddling knife, show you what is happening. Save it for the scrap pile. What I've been doing is for the top rim, I take my sponge and I kind of press a little bit of an angle onto here. This is the rim. You don't want to have a really sharp rim. It's not pleasant to drink from. This rounds it a little bit, softens it a little bit. And I actually also do the bottom and that's for a different reason. Now this clay was soft and I added water to it. So, get the torch. This isn't the best practice, to be honest with you. You want to let it dry on its own. But I've done this a lot, I've practiced. And so I kind of know what to do. Just a little bit. All that did was just take the extra moisture out that I added with the sponge. Some potters use those for throwing too to stiffen up things on the wheel before they throw more. For really domed bowls and bases, you'll see people use torches. Or you won't see them, but they will use them. They should pop up pretty easily. One trick I can tell you is if you take, take it a little bit away from the wall and then you can totally work. 
A compressor with air works better, or you can use your mouth. There we go. Half of my cup is finished. That looks nice. You really can't have too much slip. I mean, you can, but it's better to have too much. I'm also gonna do one more rescore. Some people don't do this. It really helps work the slip into your score marks. Make sure they fit. Kind of work the edges together. Taking my fiddling knife, and I'm just knitting the inside together. Normally you would have two halves, but I've had some difficulty with this mold, so I'm just using half of it. When that's finished, you can take a, a brush and kind of wiggle back and forth to smooth out those lines. Remember the trick to get this out? That one side still, there we go. My plan is I'll knit this together, smooth that out a little bit. Yes, that will distort my design. I think I'm gonna glaze over this area with an opaque color. That looks messy, but it's gonna be fine, don't worry. I know you're all worried, don't worry. I'll sand it down when it's bone dry. We gotta have a bottom for this, right? This I made from rolling scraps together. It's kind of the thing I've been doing, just kind of experimenting with different ways to make work. As an artist, never stop experimenting because that's when the work gets dull. Doing the same thing over and over and over again. Sometimes you have to do it, but that's when the work can really get boring. My advice, never stop experimenting with your work. I might hate this, but at least I'll know. Taking my finger and I'm kind of doing some finger beveling here. Kind of press and wiggle this down into place. It's pretty nice. And lastly, I'm just gonna work this into the seams. I let this dry slowly inside of a wood cabinet, and the next day I kind of cut off all this extra and smooth it out. That's everything, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should do so, you will not regret it. There is a giveaway coming soon. I promise there is, I just have to finish this work, so I have some really cool pieces to give away. My name is Jim and I will see you in the next video.